Hi, it's Wesley, 22 Zines, and I'm back for a few days of catch-up with International Zine Month. I have just decided to combine all the ones that I need to get caught up on into a single video, which works pretty well, because a lot of these are pretty short. So we'll just jump right in. The official prompt for Day 10, which is where we last left off, is write a letter or a message to a zinester. And um, I have been talking to a few people throughout the month, but I took the opportunity on day 10 to send some handwritten notes and uh, send them out to some of my zine friends and also went ahead and got together some of my zines to send out to my aunt who I've been, I keep saying that, oh yeah, I'll send you some of my zines and then I just keep forgetting about it. So those are finally in the mail now and I already have another, <laughs> another thing on top of my huge library book stack uh, to mail out. So yeah, pretty simple. I'd call that one a success. For the free zine for this prompt, I immediately thought about prison pen pals, um, which is exactly what it sounds like, where you um, write letters and be pen pals with someone currently incarcerated. And um, I found this really excellent resource actually, and it is a collection of multiple zines that are designed to support trans and gender variant and gender non-conforming people who are currently incarcerated. So it's like a selection of resources. There's a whole guide on how to change your name and gender legally while in prison. There are resource guides with a bunch of lists of organizations that can help with legal proceedings or otherwise help support you and um, the whole organization helps connect um, LGBT people who are not currently incarcerated with people who are trans who are to become pen pals. So it seems like a really great resource and these zines are really awesome, really dense, and they're all available to download and print for free and you can read them. And if you happen to have a prison pen pal or um, are interested in becoming pen pals with somebody, then this would definitely be great resources to be able to send them. And they are written in a way to try and conform to as many prison standards as possible because a lot of prisons have very strict standards about what you can send. So just make sure that before you go actually sending this in the mail that you double check whatever the requirements are for what you can and can't send. Like sometimes some places don't allow stapled materials, which is I mean, fucking whatever. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, the uh, project is called the TGI Justice Project, and I believe that's Trans, Gender Variant, and Intersex Justice Project. Um, and they have multiple resources up on their page that you can read for free and send out. So <laughs> there's some really great zines. The official prompt for day 11 is... International Zine Day, read a zine from a country different from your own. So for this one, okay, I ordered a couple of zines from Portland Button Works months ago, many months ago, that are bilingual. They are written with some parts in English and some parts in French, and they seemed really interesting, and the description seemed really interesting, and the coolest part about them are that they are bound really interestingly. This one is bound with an actual, like, hard cover glued in and, you know, bound like a book, which is really cool. The zine is Cheap Toys. This one is number 24. And I have another one of Cheap Toys that is kept in this uh, little paper bag thing so that it doesn't damage any other zines because it is bound in sandpaper which is some of the most unique binding that I've ever seen and I really I just I really like it and I'm really intrigued by it and these are huge zines by the way they are so many pages they are like a hundred pages Maybe not a hundred. I, I don't know. Maybe a hundred. It's like, it's a, it's a ton of pages. I feel very guilty about this, but I 
even after I got them, I still hadn't read either of these cheap toys zines. Um, <laughs> and to be honest, it's just because a lot of it is in French and I, I mean, I don't read French. I read enough that I know how to ask where is the bathroom, kind of. I think I don't even know, I don't even remember how to do that, but like I had a, a quick crash course. Um, I don't know enough French to be able to read them. And that was just a huge barrier for me where I felt like I really wanted to read them and I just kept saying I'd get around to it where I would um, try to read it using Google Translate and like typing all of the text of the zine into Google Translate so that I could read it or, you know, read it approximately. Obviously Google Translate isn't that good, but just from context clues to really be able to enjoy the whole zine. And of course, I just never got around to that. <laughs> so what I did for day 18, or I'm sorry, 18? Where did that come from? Day 11 <laughs> um, is I went ahead and put in the effort to read these zines and they are so worth it. It was so, so much fun. They are so well put together and so interesting. And there's so much content. I just really liked it. So basically what I did, some parts are in English and some parts are in French, French pages. Um, it's maybe roughly 50-50. And um, so I just went ahead and read all of the English parts that I could read. And then turns out that Google Translate, if you get it as an app on your phone, at least on mine, I have an Android, don't know if it's different for other phones, but on my phone, there's a, a feature of the Google Translate app where you can um, take a picture or scan a page and it will translate the text either in real time, like you can hover it over the text and it will replace it with translated text, like translated through Google Translate, or you can take a picture of it and then it will, you know, read the text and output it translated, which is makes it really... <laughs> so much easier than having to actually type it. Um, and it worked reasonably well, well enough to the point that I could kind of understand what it was talking about. Um, and it was just really interesting. So just a little bit more about what this is actually about. Uh, Cheap Toys is uh, this, this particular one, 24, which is the one I'm going to be really talking about because to be perfectly honest, I still haven't totally got around to reading or finishing this one, which this one is number something else. What is that number? 31? That doesn't make sense. Okay, I don't know what number this is. Whatever that number is. Oh, 23. Why was I having such a hard time reading that? <laughs> anyway. Um, number 23, but number 24, <laughs> um, this one was really interesting because this was written in the summer of 2020 and at the introduction, there is a bit on COVID and what the lockdowns were like in, um, Marseille, I think is where this, uh, author is based. I don't totally remember. I'm pretty sure... It's uh, based in Marseille. And so there were specific lockdowns where you had to have papers to, you know, justify where you're going. They had a shit ton of police activity in the area. And so they spent a whole bunch of money on police and drones to monitor people going outside, but did not have a lot on actually trying to keep people safe. Like they didn't put money into unemployment or into any sort of emergency features that could allow people to not have to go out and work. Rather, they just amped up the security a whole bunch and <laughs> forced people to carry around papers and justify where they're going to work. And of course, the police were especially targeting um, marginalized communities and non-white communities and just people who... Um, you know, 
they basically used the the papers as like an excuse to stop them on the street. Um, so that was a that was really interesting to learn more about um, some of the restrictions from COVID in another country because America was not really good at doing restrictions of pretty much any kind, even in major cities. I think maybe for like two weeks in major cities, they implemented curfews. But to be honest, I think those curfews had more to do with Black Lives Matter protests than COVID because they were happening around June, not around April when it was really, when COVID was really amping up. So I don't know. America's weird. (laughs) Um, But it was really interesting to learn about how another country was managing it. Uh, The majority of the content of this issue and of this scene is actually more about um, a response to an article that they read in another zine. And that article was basically ranting about how people monetizing their um, DIY learned skills was um, not a good thing basically was that it sort of hurt the spirit of DIY culture and the spirit of artisan culture to try to build up these skills and then use them just as padding on your resume or to otherwise try and turn everything into uh you know a a second job or trying to monetize everything that you do and as this author points out there are there is a grain of truth to that in the sense that you don't want to, um, how can I say this? Like, (laughs) um, trying to get into something and especially trying to get into a countercultural movement, um, in which zines for a lot of people are a very countercultural movement. Um, trying to get into that for the sole sake of having something to make money off of is not the right approach. And, um, companies that will try to pander to these um, countercultural movements to try and make money. That's not a good thing. But what this author points out is that just people, average everyday people who have skills, who are trying to, um, who monetize them for one reason or another, are not doing anything wrong. And in fact, they sort of in a lot of ways, they sort of have to. They described it as a compromise with the weight of capitalism, which I think is a really a really great description. And basically, through a series of interviews with different people who have monetized their, um, monetized their skills, monetized their creative skills in a variety of ways, um, sort of explores this idea of why is it that people monetize these skills. What are they doing? What is their motivation? What do they want to be doing in life? How does this fit in with um, activist beliefs? How does this fit in with anti-capitalist beliefs and all that sort of thing? And as you might have guessed, as you might have suspected, um, most people are not monetizing, or uh, let me, let me restart that sentence. Most people are not doing creative things for the sake of monetizing them. People don't usually go into things saying, I am going to do this creative thing solely for the purpose of making money off of it. Um, that That is not the dominant thing. People want to go into it for creative expression. They want to do it for something they love. It might be sort of a potential for supplemental income. Um, which of that also isn't really a bad thing. Like trying to make money off of something that you love to do and something that you are good at is not an inherently bad thing. It, it like you shouldn't be criticizing the people who are trying to make a living and trying to support themselves under this damaging structure of capitalism. You should be criticizing the structure. So, all of that was a very long-winded way (laughs) of saying that there are some really great interviews, (laughs) really great interviews in this zine where uh, she talks to 
individual creators and artists and just kind of gets their perspective on this whole idea and where they might be coming from as creators. So that's really cool. And like, I'm really just scratching the surface of this zine. And obviously it's made me think and it's, it's, it's roused a lot of um, emotion and a lot of thought in me, which I really like. There's also some photos and there's, uh, there are movie highlights, I guess, or movie reviews of some very obscure anarchist movies that some of which have not even been produced entirely. My favorite one that it describes is Dishwasher Pete, the motion picture, um, which is a short film. Um, and it was about the quest of Pete Dishwasher Jordan to wash dishes in all 50 states of the United States. <laughs> um, so that's really cool. There's a bit on... Um, the infrastructure of the internet, where I learned something new, that 99% of the internet relies on a particular submarine cable in the Pacific Ocean, <laughs> which is like, never would have learned any of that. And that's also where a lot of wiretapping happens. <laughs> Interesting though. So the point is, this is such a good zine, and it was really cheap also, <laughs> just to let you know, like cheap toys, that is not a lie. Um, there's so much in here. It was absolutely worth translating the French parts, but even if you don't feel like that, just the English parts are great. Or if you happen to read French, then great. You don't have to translate anything. Um, so the, what was the prompt again? The international zine. Reading a zine from a country different from your own. This is from France. It's bilingual and it is really great. The free zine that I have for the international zine day is I want to be your girl and that's by Larissa Oliveira. Um, it is about the Brazilian riot girl scene, and it is so cool. This is also a bilingual zine. It is half English and half Portuguese, and it has personal interviews. It has memories about old riot girl stuff. It has new riot girl punk bands in Brazil, and it has personal experiences. It's like, it's just really cool. It is the old cut and paste style and it looks really fun. There are right now six issues of this scene that you can read for free <laughs> that Larissa has put up online, readable online. You don't even have to download anything of this one, although you can if you want to. You can just read it online on your screen and it is really cool, really fun. That's definitely one of those ones that I think will also be worth translating the Portuguese <laughs> when I can manage to get around to that in probably another six months. <laughs> so I want to be your girl. Highly recommend. The official prompt for day 12 is Zine Wiki Day. It's a wiki just for zines. Add to or update listings to the new and improved zinewiki.com. So yeah, it's a wiki for zines. And basically there are a ton of pages, but there should be a ton more <laughs> of zinesters and zines old and new. Um, so this is encouraging you to create a page about a zine that you've read and that you liked or a zinester if you are one or a zinester that you know and um, contribute to the wiki. So I have started very vaguely started the Wesley Suker page on that um, my plan was to get that one totally finished. I haven't really got around to it yet. And that is because I sort of got distracted with editing a listing with more information about a particular zine. Um, I don't really want to get into that now because it's a whole can of worms. Okay, you know what? I'm going to get into it right now because it's a whole can of worms. Basically, there's this zine called Pork Magazine. And it is sort of a newspaper style magazine that is sent out for free in a lot of alternative spaces. And I have this sort of pained look on my face because um, it is problematic. Or at least when I was aware of it and, and the zine and the copies that I ended up getting just for free in like a studs and spikes order or whatever, it's like basically it uses a lot of Nazi imagery 
for the sh sake of shock value, which is bullshit. Like, it's seriously old Sex Pistols kind of punk where they literally just are trying to antagonize and get a rise out of people by publishing racist stuff, by pu publishing Nazi and SS and other white supremacist stuff. And, you know, it, they're doing it all as kind of like a joke of like, oh, haha, ha, we're trying to offend you, fuck you, kind of thing. If you're really offended, then you're the one who's the idiot, instead of like, yeah, but the thing is, it's not being done as satire. It's it's really like, if you can't tell the difference between someone who's an actual Nazi and someone who is using a swastika for the sake of provocation, then you're basically siding with the Nazis, and that is not cool. So, um, the wiki article for this, um, it was okay before, but I feel like the way in which it described didn't really paint the whole picture. It just said simply that it had been, un that the magazine Pork had been under fire for offensive content and had been banned from a few places. And the problem is the way that that was worded, it's like, okay, that could have been people were upset at queer people describing their own experiences because they find queer people to be ex uh, to be offensive. That is very different from, we're going to willingly print a whole bunch of anti-Semitic bullshit just to piss you off. Like, those are kind of two different categories, so I wanted to describe it a little bit more. Now, while I was doing my research for this, in wow. the interest of transparency, um, I found an article from 2017 that was mentioning um, that the creator of Pork Magazine had decided amidst the Trump administration to stop printing uh, Nazi symbolism and white supremacist symbolism because um, it was attracting actual Nazis and actual white supremacists. And it, you know, he basically said, now is not the time to be doing this. We haven't changed our beliefs. We've, it's just that the, the cultural shift makes this not saying what we want to say. Now, I respect that, kind of. <laughs> There's two problems. One, it was very quietly removed from the issues and just quietly taken off of the site, um, which I feel like doesn't sound especially apologetic. It just kind of sounds like, you know, I suppose that it it could have been a change of heart, but it just was not handled very well in the in the first place. And um, I do think that people can change, but I also think that an apology, at the bare minimum, an apology was necessary and an admission that they were wrong to publish that sort of thing to begin with, um, which clearly they haven't changed their stance on that. They don't seem to think that it is wrong, you know, kind of in a conceptual sense of like, hey, don't print swastikas and bullshit like that. So... I'm still not totally on board with it. I, I am not a supporter of pork. I don't know about, like... There have been a lot of boycotts and specific calls to boycott. I haven't ever been particularly active about it just because I haven't had a lot of interactions with pork and there haven't been a lot of local places that have distributed it or anything. So, I don't know. I just felt like <laughs> the pork page on the... Um, zine wiki needed some updating it needed a little more clarity so that people could understand what the whole situation was what pork actually was what the controversy was um my description is still woefully inadequate but i tried to at the very least link some sources in there so that you know people wouldn't go there saying like oh offensive content you know that's stupid Zines should be able to be whatever you want and not realize it's like, okay, but you know, this is, this is like actual offensive content. You know what I mean? 
So that's what I ended up spending most of my time on while I was editing the zine wiki, and hopefully that whole description was not totally boring. It, it obviously, you know, it deserves a lot more than just a five minutes in in this video but i mean it just the whole situation kind of kind of sucks which is why i felt obligated to try and clean up that page a little bit anyway for the day 12 free zine i found a zine through the zine wiki <laughs> um and this zine is called liver mortis l-i-v-o-r mortis um, the one that is available for free is number six, or at least that's the one that I found. There may be a few other issues. And it is a pretty interesting little um, urban slash street photography zine in London, where basically they will go out and photograph a lot of um, graffiti and urban spaces. And it's it's very interesting. I, I think this is a really great way to engage with the photography zine, because the Photography zines are sort of tricky because they are very expensive to print well because they require better um, paper to be able to support that amount of ink. They require better inks. It's usually a little glossier, so it's like the whole thing turns out to be more expensive. And then photographs are also faster to consume than text. Um, so I know that a lot of people... Not that they don't like photograph scenes, it's just that they maybe aren't drawn to them. And so having this free one <laughs> makes makes it easy to engage with it and makes it more accessible for a lot of people. Um, and what th this is going to sound really dumb, but like what really kind of sold me on the scene was that they had this edited picture of Newman from Seinfeld at the, on the back page. And that's of course like the tackiest, stupidest thing that I could ever like about the zine, considering how deep and evocative the other photographs are. <laughs> so I guess that just shows a little bit about my, my taste and my sense of humor. Um, but it's really interesting and I highly recommend that you check it out. Liver Mortis number six. The official prompt for day 13 is make up a zine superstition and share it. For example, skip the 13th issue, spin three times to avoid copier jams, your best friend reads your zine first. Um, this one that I have, it is not a superstition. It is absolutely 100% true. And that is zines should never ever go in the trash. Regardless, zines should be shared. Zines should be left elsewhere for people to be able to pick them up, left in little free libraries, mailed to a random person, dropped in a random mailbox. It doesn't matter. You cannot throw away a zine or else the rest of your life is going to be lashed with misery and woe. <laughs> like, at very, very worst, if you must, you have to recycle it. You can't throw it out. Um, that's that. This next free zine that I have is a very interesting one. It is incredibly unique. It is all digital, no print. And it is called Tales from Puke City. Um, this is actually a fanzine. I have no idea what it is a fanzine of. I mean, it's I know the title of it, but I'd never heard of it or anything. It is a fanzine of something called Lame Zone. I don't know what it is. I think it's like it's it's like a website art piece multimedia thing. <laughs> I don't know. I guess it's it's sort of like um Homestuck not in in topics or theme or length or anything like that, but just in the fact that it is a digital um, story that, like, can only be expressed digitally. I don't know. I'm not entirely sure. But this takes the same style and um, makes an all-digital zine where basically you download it 
and you will download a bunch of the pages and then it'll have a separate folder for some of the assets on those pages. And then you open up the page, which is a link. It's like an, a .html file that you open up and you can read it in your browser. And then you can click on different uh, characters, like all of the uh, anthro animals, all the personas and stuff in here. You click on them and you learn about the persona and the artist and you and you click through and it's like, you know, taking a little adventure through Puke City, which is apparently the uh, main setting in which the Lame Zone story takes place. It is really wild. I have experienced very few things like it. Um, it's really interesting and it's all available to download for free. So I highly recommend checking it out. The reason that I associated it with this uh, particular Zine 13 superstition prompt is just because I feel like it's appropriately spooky in a few ways. It's got some sort of glitch art. It's not horror. It just is kind of spooky. There are, there are some mature themes, so, you know, despite the rather playful medium, probably wouldn't recommend this one for kids. Um, but yeah, <laughs> it's really cool. Tales from Puke City, that is the free zine for today. And it really does stretch the limits of what a zine must be. <laughs> And the day 14 prompt, which means that I will be all caught up in this video, is Valenzine's Day. Give yourself some zine love, read zines in a bubble bath, buy some new scissors, let your zine friends know that you care about them, as some, as some ideas for how to do this prompt. And for this one, um, what I am doing <laughs> is filming this, which is giving myself some love because it means taking the time out to really be able to engage with International Zine Month and engage with the zine community, which means a whole lot to me, and I have been enjoying doing these prompts so much and enjoying doing these videos so much. I really, really just have loved that, and I have also gone ahead and treated myself to a few more zines. I think I said this before, but I will probably go ahead and do a zine wrap-up, like a zine haul kind of thing at the end of the month to show off all the zines that I've gotten throughout the month, just because they're going to arrive in very staggered ways. Um, so yeah. And of course, to continue spreading the zine love, the free zine for today is I'm Worried About Wine Moms by Moss, whose zine project is Breaking the Binary. Um, Moss is, I think, one of the organizers of the Queer Zest Zine Fest, which I'm going to be participating in later this month. You should definitely check that out. And um, this zine is absolutely hilarious. It is basically um, pointing out a lot of what Moss has titled Ciscore, which is basically like the like very specific aesthetics that are common to cis people and common to a um to particular varieties of white middle slash upper class um people <laughs> and and it is really weird so it it goes it talks a little bit about um like the wine mom culture of like tacky wine related paraphernalia and decor in the home and um man caves and beach beach mom which is related to wine mom it's it's really interesting, it's really funny. You realize that you are not the only person who finds it strange that people hate their partners. <laughs> so yeah, that's all caught up on International Zine Month. I will probably keep combining certain videos, especially the ones that are um, meant to be for prompts that otherwise just aren't all that long um, because it just makes it so much easier than having to get the footage and edit it 
you know, and make a whole bunch of separate videos. So, um, we'll see. I'll, I'll probably try to do some longer ones, give them their own video. Um, but otherwise I'll condense them. I mean, it all doesn't really matter, right? Like, <laughs> as soon as the month is over, then everybody who watches it after that is going to be playing catch-up, so does it really matter whether it's in one or one video or multiple videos? I mean, if you have a preference or if you have an opinion, please feel free to let me know <laughs> in the comments below. And otherwise, I will see you tomorrow, tomorrow-ish, <laughs> for more of International Zine Month. Bye.